Hi everyone, <clears throat> Ray Diaz from Pro String London again. Uh, I've just been given a very last second, someone just called us uh, saying they needed the racket be strung now for their son. They had some school tryouts today, it turns out <clears throat> they had the racket, but unstrung as most rackets come these days. So, uh, Wilson Clash V2. I'm not mistaken, V2, this is a 295 grams, if I'm not mistaken. This is the 1619 100L, so it might actually be a little bit lighter. That's the L, so 280 grams. I think there's the, the Tour, the normal Clash, which is 295. The Tour is 310, I believe. Um, this is the lightest version they have of the Clash, from what I understand and believe. Um, there you go, F find your middle, set your rack it nicely on the machine not too tight guys don't tighten don't apply too much pressure in fact should be very little amount of pressure you should be adding to um, your uh, racket head or mounting system so there you have it we'll be using a multi-filament string pro string pure multi-filament thousand reels here sometimes I'm just gonna open a new one uh, Mark, it's a 14 year old boy, hasn't played too much tennis recently uh, for six months or so, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So, we're going to go 53 pounds of tension, a little bit softer than normal. However, we need to up the tension four pounds and a half, two kilos roughly, because it's a brand new frame, never been strung before. Start from the top. The reason being, uh, when you restring. The racket for the first time uh, it's quite common or well, always happens that the tension tends to drop a little bit uh, whilst the whilst the grommets set into the racket if that makes sense so you got your first two main strings you've got 16 19 stringing pattern we need seven more to each side in total eight main strings to each side so one two three four five six seven there you have it Pull your string through. Like I said, we started from the top. There are six holes at the bottom of this racket, three loops. I call that a loop. Hopefully you agree. And if you don't, then we'll, uh, we'll agree to disagree or disagree to agree. <laughs> but anyway, 53 pounds of tension, but I'm upping that to uh, 50, 57 and a half, four pounds and a half more. Uh, typically, or two kilos, which actually would be, uh, your exact equivalent would be 4.4 pounds. One kilo is 2.2 pounds. So, I'm gonna try to do this relatively quick, let's say, but without killing myself or rushing too much. So just one step ahead of uh, myself in terms of talking, we're going to always pull through three strings to each side. Another phone call. Coming up. We want to string symmetrically and not add too much stress to one side of the racket um, without adding tension to the other side. So a lot of people may, when they're starting out and don't really understand how this all works, they might just string three. Oh, that racket slightly moved over and caught the clamp. Uh, the clamp? The grommet. Okay, fine. All good. Grommet just popped out now. <clears throat> uh, three to each side, guys. Keeping the stress to a minimal on the, on the racket head, racket frame in itself. If you do one side, you're really adding a lot of pressure to one side of the racket and nothing on the other side. So, um... Especially if it's a cheap racket, an old racket, be very careful with that. Shouldn't do it full stop, but if you are gonna do it, be prepared to uh, either lose shape in your racket or even break your racket. Especially on the cheaper side of the uh, spectrum, let's say. So I'm on my fourth main on this side now. Five, six, and then we go back to this side. These clamps are semi-automatic or 
semi-manual, I mean, no, semi, semi-automatic, I guess you could say. So they're automatic, they have a release system. They're not fully uh, automatic, because they have a release system. So as soon as I pull the clamp down, the base releases. This, uh, this is a Wilson Bayardo original, guys. So as you can see, now when I unclamp and I drop this part here, the base, on latches or releases. So we're using the Pro String Pure Multi-Filament Strings, uh, which is our home brand. It's actually the best seller. It's a very good string. Um, we produce it in Austria and our polyesters in Germany, for that matter. They're a very nice multi-filament string priced uh, at 16 pounds a set. We don't really sell sets uh, online or even on our website. We try to focus more on reels and try to keep our carbon footprint down. No plastic packaging, no um, cardboard or paper inside. It's just something that I'm less interested in doing. Call me dumb, maybe. Probably is a silly thing. But at the same time, uh, I am I'm very happy to sell sets. Um, but preferably without packaging. With it, when it comes to reels, I don't have a choice, of course, as, it, as you'd imagine, it is plastic. The 200 meter, 200 meter or 100, we'd sell them only in 200 meter reels, multi-filament and um, polyesters, only in 200 meters, not in 100. Some, some brands have 100 meters as well. Guys, I did up my tension 15%, FYI, for your information. And I will do exactly the same on this side when I come to my last main string. Pulled my, I put my tension up. My, my, uh, my machine's programmed already to go up 15% as soon as I just touch the knot button. It has a nice little knot button on the LED screen. If you're thinking about buying a Wilson Bayardo, stop thinking about it and just buy it. It's a great machine. Great machine. Parnell knot, guys, down around through my first loop, down around through my first knot. <clears throat> Luckily, I don't know why I just did that. Luckily, I pulled my first uh, my first knot. That was ridiculous. So pull your both knots to be safe, but luckily I didn't completely cock that up. <clears throat> Thinking... A lot of things in my head recently, a lot of rackets behind here. I know you guys can't see them. I'm slightly under a bit of stress. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a half. Client wants a black overgrip as well. Seven and a half full lengths of the racket, guys. Not just the racket head size. I hopefully you, you can see the full racket uh, just about. Um, find yourself a nice space in one of the... Um, one of the main strings, which would be your anchor string. Again, a polynel knot, simple single knot, and then through with the second one through the first knot. Okay, there we have it. You don't want to go too far over, guys. Um, you could also tie it here. This, uh, so you can tie it on the sixth or seventh main string. No issues, no problem at all. It doesn't matter which side you start this racket on start not on this side that side it won't make a difference most rackets it doesn't make a difference what side you start on there's lots of babble that you do need to be careful because of the fsi spin technology grommets as you can see taking no risk and making sure i keep moving my hand to avoid as least friction as possible between my main strings and crosses
So as you can see, stringing one ahead as always, it makes this weave, this next weave, always easier. So your string should always, the string that you're weaving, like I've just done now, should always be opposite to the top one. So if this string is over, your next one should be under, that's under, that should be over, under, over, so on and so on. A good way of checking your work as well is checking your first and last string on each side should always also be opposite, under, over, under, over. piece of rubber is going to have to go. It's stretched over time. I fixed it before by cutting a little bit off. It's just uh, restricting me from dropping the clamp and releasing the base. Just a tiny bit, but it's getting worse by the day. Which ain't fun. Not the end of the world, but I'd rather have it not in the way. As you can see, keep moving that hand. all this friction possible. So the grommet slightly got pulled out here. So I'm gonna keep my finger on that and then lift this string up ever so slightly. Who's, uh, who's gonna win Indian Wells this year, guys? Who do you think? Djokovic? Sinner? Don't know about Alcaraz. Alcaraz has uh, been a bit up and down in his, uh, in his form over the last few months. If it's not an injury, if it's not one thing, it's another. There you go, cut the excess string on the knot. If you have a stringing service and you are busy, then you might want to charge a bit extra for your express services where you're prioritizing other people before others. Kind of makes sense if you want to be first uh, in line before everybody else that's been waiting a few days already, for example, like in my case, um, then you need to, it's probably a smart, smart idea to, um, to up your price a little bit and express, if, you know, if you're not super busy and you're someone that has some spare time on your hands and you wanna be really nice to your clients, then hey, don't charge anything extra. Um, but I think it's important that the client values your time, that you know, you are able, if you are able to do it, and they, you know, if you're building up a business, maybe waive the fee, let yourself get busy, let the demand go up, let the word go around that you're good and you offer a great service and stuff like that. Might be a good uh, option from a business point of view. I sure did that at the beginning. I didn't charge for ex express services. 
Um, but I <laughs> went from, uh, from not being that busy and just streaming from the house. And then it just went boom. I started with uh, my house uh, Google verification in Hammersmith and then went on to uh, go into the city. I thought, well, if this is working in, in, in Hammersmith, London, then what will happen in the city where there's thousands or hundreds of thousands of people uh, potentially going through uh, in a day. So then that one uh, went well. Uh, in Moorgate, I think our first uh, reception was in the city, which is probably about eight miles from here, give or take. And then we ended up uh, in uh, in Bank. And now we're near, very near Liverpool Street Station. And it looks like we're having to move again. If it's not one thing, it's another sometimes. So it's a bit of a tricky business model that we do run. It works incredibly well. But we do have our uh, fair share of challenges, unfortunately. Life is never perfect, but make the best of it when and how you, however you can. We're coming up to, uh, to an end, guys. I haven't really rushed it, let's say. I'd like to think anyway. You may have thinking, oh, this guy's crazy. Um, just at my own speed, my normal kind of speed, the camera wasn't on. So, hopefully you guys have uh, taken some uh, information away from this. Again, this is the Wilson Clash L. 280 grams, 16 by 19 Strugging uh, pattern. Right, this last cross string, number 19. I am going to up the tension, 15%. Done. Pull the string. Keep us up a little space between the uh, grommet and racket and clamp. Should never be touching. Um, my knot is gonna be on my one, two, three, four, five, sixth main string. That's the closest one that I'm seeing. Uh, no, nece not necessary to go up here or this next one over would probably fit as well. Well, it probably would be would fit if I use the all. Try to avoid using the all. For you those for you for those that don't know what an all is, this is an all. That's the official name of this long pointy thing. And Parnell knot. I'm gonna pull on my first knot and then complete it with the second. There you guys have it. I'm gonna actually change the grip as well. Uh, also, a little tip when they bring you new rackets, if you are gonna take the plastic off, I always ask the client, should I take the plastic off for you? You never know, it might be a gift for somebody, you just never know what it could be. Um, so just be careful with that. Um, Sounds pretty tight, um, considering uh, the 53 pounds of tension. Well, it's, we've put it up to, um, 57 and a half, four and a half pounds more of tension, two kilos. Um, move your strings, straighten up your strings, guys. Hopefully they're nice and straight. As you can see, every time I pull the string, I was supporting my cross string every time it was being pulled to purely keep it in place and not let it drop. Don't push on it too high either. There you have it, guys. The client obviously wants me to put on a new overgrip. You've got a little uh, end normally there where it, it's kind of, um, how would you say? Uh, it's kind of marked. You're marking to uh, be able to pull it off easily. That's it. There you go, plastic's off. I'm gonna put the overgrip on behind the camera. Or not, not recording it at least, is what I mean. Right guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully this was useful for you guys. Um, uh, any comments, etc. feedback, please, all, everything is welcome. Don't be mean um, if there's something you didn't like or whatever. Um, happy to always improve my streaming skills as well. But happy streaming for now, guys. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.